Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC from GMK Tech. And if you're not familiar with this company, we've actually taken a look at a bunch of their mini PCs. They do specialize in small form factor Intel and AMD. But what makes their brand new Nookbox K6 so special is the fact that we've actually got the Ryzen 7 7848HS. So we've got that Zen 4 CPU along with RDNA 3 graphics and a super small form factor footprint. With the new Nookbox K6, they've also got an upgraded cooling system. We'll take a closer look at that in a little bit. Dual Ethernet around back, and we can actually add two M.2 NVMe SSDs internally with the new K6. So yeah, I think this thing's going to put out some amazing performance, especially given the fact that we've got that 7840HS. Inside of the box, along with the K6 mini PC, we also get a 120 watt power supply. This is not utilizing USB Type-C power input. We've actually got a barrel jack, so yeah, we can get plenty of power to this thing. It's also got a little mounting system and an HDMI cable. Recently on the channel, we took a look at the Nookbox K4, which is actually powered by a 7940HS, which theoretically should outperform the 7840HS. Not by much, but I did want to give you a look at the K4, because the K6 is coming in with a bigger footprint, it's just a tad larger, and the reason is we've got that new cooling system, and with the K6, we've got two M.2 slots. With the K4, we were kind of locked down to a single NVMe SSD. When it comes to I.O. on the new Nookbox K6, up front here, we've got a 3.5mm audio jack and two full-size USB 3.2 ports, along with USB 4, which is 40 gig protocol, so we can get the maximum out of that port. And if you wanted to connect an eGPU or really fast storage, not a problem to do so with the K6. Not much going on around the sides, just a bit of ventilation, but moving around back, we've got another USB 3.2 port, a full-size USB 2.0 port, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, and dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, along with our power input. Now, of course, we got to take a look at the specs of the new Nookbox K6, and it's definitely packing some performance here because we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS. All of these cores are based on Zen 4. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.8 GHz with a boost up to 5.1, built-in Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3 up to 2700 MHz, and this does have 12 compute units. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 here. It utilizes SODIMM RAM, given that we're working with a mini PC, up to 5600 megahertz, two M.2 NVMe slots, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 Pro out of the box. Now, I definitely wanted to give you a look at the internals here. Super easy to get into. We've got a pop-off cover, and right underneath this, we've got our new fan system for cooling the NVMe SSDs and the RAM. So we've got a single fan set up, four screws. You can go ahead and remove this. Then you'll need to unplug that fan from the main board. Pretty easy to get into, but once we get this off, go ahead and unplug it. You can see single fan. I was thinking there would have been a heat sink on here making contact with that NVMe, but there's a heat sink on the included NVMe drive. This happens to have a one terabyte drive and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5,600 megahertz running in dual channel. And it looks like with this unit here, we've got a data RAM, and I'm not exactly sure about the SSD. I've seen some using Lexar, I've seen some using some other brands, so I'm not sure what will be included with the final version of this. But we've also got that extra slot, so you can always add more storage. Okay, so here it is. Been doing a little testing so far, and it's not bad at all. I mean, we've got that 7840HS, which does put down some amazing performance. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600 and the Radeon 780M graphics. Now, one thing I always like to do before I get into any kind of testing is just take a look at TDP, what this thing is running at out of the box. And to do this, I use a combination of applications. Uh, we've got Core Temp, just to give us a look at that total package power right here. We've also got CPU-Z, so we can stress out all eight cores. Looks like this jumped up to 54 watts. And GPU-Z, just to put a load on that GPU. We'll make sure we're loaded up here. Right there, 54 watts. And it'll stay like this all day. Cooling system is handling it just fine. But there is more that we can get out of this PC. And I want to show you real quick. I'll stop this. One application I personally love using is x86 Tuning Utility. This gives us a plethora of different settings that we can mess around with. We've got a pre-made section. 
Custom section, and from here, we can set our custom TDP. But for this system here, we're just going to go with pre made. There's an eco, balanced, performance, and extreme. Go into performance, It'll give us a little notification here stating that we're in performance mode. But we're going to see if this will handle extreme. So we're in extreme. We'll run another stress test. And you'll see this jumps up to around 65 watts. Again, let's put a load on that GPU just to make sure we're getting as much as possible. And in extreme mode, we're at 70 watts with this little PC. Temp is kind of climbing up, but remember, I mean, while we're gaming, we're not going to be at a steady 70 watts. So I think I'm going to leave it right here. And now I want to move over to some benchmarks that I ran on this in extreme performance mode. Okay, so first up, we've got Geekbench 6, single core, 2,465, multi, 12,774. This is right where we need to be. And while running Geekbench, we don't even go up to 70 watts here. Maximum that I saw was around 63. Now we'll check out some GPU benchmarks using 3D Mark. Firestrike, 7,972, and this is really good. We're about 200 points more than most of these other mini PCs that I test with this same chip. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 3,347. Just to put this into perspective for you, highest score I've ever got out of these RDNA 3i GPUs, which was the 7940HS, was around 3,400. So we're right there where it needs to be. And this is looking great. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now we need to test out some real-world gaming. And the first one we have here is Mortal Kombat 1. If you've ever tried this on any iGPU, you know it can really tear it up. That's why I had to drop this down to 900p. We do have FSR set to balance right now, but we've got a steady 60 FPS. And if you take a look at Afterburner, right there where our CPU package power is, you'll see it jump up to close to 48 every once in a while. So we're not stressing this out. Remember, in extreme mode with x86 tuning utility, this will do up to 70 watts. And the big reason I always like to go up that high, even though most of these games aren't going to use that much wattage, is just in case. So there are some games that may need to boost up a little bit to alleviate any kind of frame drops. This definitely helps out in the end. Next up, we've got the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and my game capture was definitely a little wonky. We are at 1080p, low settings, and we got an average of 77 FPS. Taking this just from low to medium really makes it fall on its face with these iGPUs. At medium settings, we only get an average of around 62. Personally, I love playing Forza Horizon 5 on these integrated graphics because it's such a well-optimized game. We're at 1080p, medium settings. I do have VSync turned on up to 120, and I think in some cases we could go beyond 120. This is so close to being locked down there, but I mean, either way you look at it, we're well over 60. We actually got an average of 116 FPS on this little machine. Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man Remastered actually runs pretty well on the 7840HS. Right now, we're at low settings 1080p with FSR set to performance. That's just how it is with this game if you want to try to get to 60. But even then, we're going to have a few dips under. I'd say one of the best ways to play this game is V-Sync locked at 60, 900p, medium with FSR set to performance. It's been a while since I've tested out God of War on one of these machines, so I figured I'd throw it in here. And we have had some driver updates since the last time I went into this game. I can definitely see a nice jump in performance. Right now, we're at 1080p FSR set to performance, and we got an average of 68 FPS. When the 780M was first released, in order to get 60 out of this game, we did have to go down to low settings, 900p with FSR at performance, but it looks like we've got a nice little jump here. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. We are using a little bit of FSR, low settings, 1080p, performance mode, not bad at all. We're actually getting an average of around 79 FPS with this game, which is right where we need to be with that 780M clocked up to 2700 megahertz. Another thing we always monitor while doing our testing on these mini PCs is total system power consumption, and this is going to pull a lot more than some other ones because we're working with an HS variant. I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter, so this is total power draw from the wall. At idle, we're around 14 watts. Average gaming jumps up to 71, 
and the maximum that I could get this to pull was 93 watts. And keep in mind, we are in extreme performance mode here, so we've got that TDP up to around 70 watts once we stress everything out. Overall, the new GMK Tech K6 is performing really well. Glad that they have that wattage on up, and the fact that we can actually adjust it from third-party software is really nice. Some of these newer mini PCs hitting the mark with Ryzen 7000 do have kind of a hard lock, but seeing that we can really adjust this to our liking is very, very nice. It is coming in a bit bigger than their other version with the 7940HS, but we do get that extra M.2 slot, which I think is a big plus. And, you know, once the wattage is correct, we've got a bigger cooler in this. It can perform just like that 7940HS variant. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you want to see running on the GMK Tech K6, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, maybe pick one of these up. I'll leave some links to their official website and Amazon. But that's it for this one. Like always, Thanks for watching.